Today we're going to rebuild the power tilt cylinder on this 1995 Evinrude 115. The trim system on these motors has three cylinders. The two on the outsides are for actually trimming the motor when it's running fast, and the one in the center is actually just for tilting the motor up out of the water. In our situation, our unit has been leaking right here around the collar where the seal is for the tilt cylinder. And most of the videos that I've watched on YouTube, they want you to take this whole trim system out of the motor. And by pulling the pin up here, pulling the pin on the top, undoing all your wires and, and pulling it out. Well, I'm going to show you a way that you can actually do this without taking all that apart. And particularly, you won't have to take this pin out in the bottom, which if you use this thing at all in salt water, that one is hard to get out. So let's get started. You can see how the fluid's been dripping out of the top of this tilt cylinder. Next, we need to remove the snap ring, which is in this pin right here. So we have our snap ring pliers. Next, by taking a, a hammer and some type of punch, we're going to line that up on this shaft we took the snap ring off of, and we're going to start tapping it so we can tap this pin out of here. Got the upper pin released now. And at first attempt to try and tilt this thing all the way up so our motor was hitting, you know, on our ski bar. So we removed the cowling off the top of the motor to see if we could tilt a little higher. And you can see how we can actually tilt the motor way, way higher than when it normally would go. And I want to encourage you, too, to make sure that you support this thing. I've got two different supports here that I'm holding this thing up because if this thing was to fall while you're working on this steel, you know, you could actually lose a hand getting crushed, you know, in the motor as it was falling down. This special tool that actually I was able to buy off of eBay used and it has three pins on it and it's designed you know to go latch into the holes you know on top of this you know cylinder like that and then you put a breaker bar you know in the end here. Here's how this tool works right here. I've used the electric part of the power trim to actually extend the cylinder as far out as it will go before actually even taking this thing apart and my thinking is is that since the plunger will be closer to the surface here, there'll be less oil that'll come spilling out of here once I remove this out of there. Okay, as we just about got this unscrewed, we actually heard pressure come off of it. So one thing you may want to be careful of is if you actually do have this thing extended all the way out, if it's built up pressure, it may pop when you get the top all the way off. I'm going to go ahead and do the manual release and open up the check valve. Got down to the very last little bit there. You can see there's a lot of fluid coming out of this thing. So there is some amount of pressure on it, even with the check valve open. We were able to actually remove this piece, you know, with it still attached to the motor. So there is enough clearance, you know, between the saddle and the base of the hydraulic cylinder. Once you get the cylinder out, be sure to cover the open hole with a rag. No dirt or dust will fall into the trim system. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair, what's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have. I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came. He took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent. Okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust and what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. 
Okay, now let's get back to our repair and I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. Put the piston rod in my vise and that way I'm able to put a wrench on the top of that nut and spin it off. As you begin to spin this nut off, there are these little metal caps here and they're spring loaded. And so as you kick it off, you gotta make sure you don't lose any of these springs. And there's gonna be one of the springs that's shorter you know, than the others. And while the manual says it doesn't matter which hole it came out of, just go ahead and note and see which one it came out of and just put it back the way it was. Pulling this piston cylinder off of this post is a little snug. There's an O-ring that first pops up you know, that you have to pull over the top of the thread. Once you get that O-ring off of the top of this thing, now this thing will slide off very easily. After cleaning up this piston rod, we notice that there's a little bit of gouging in a couple spots. So it is possible this O-ring actually got damaged by a little bit of roughness here. So we're going to start off by doing a little bit of uh, sanding on it with some 320. We'll go to 1,000 and then we'll follow up with 2,000 and get this thing all smoothed out. These black sandpapers are actually meant to be used as a wet sand. So instead of using water though, I'm actually going to use a little bit of WD-40 and I'll wet my cylinder down and then I'll sand it with the black sandpaper. I'm actually up to using my 2000 grit now and right on my spots there that I'm at. This really puts a good polish on it. And I went and looked to see how much this part cost and on eBay the cheapest one I could find was $287. So for the light amount of damage on this, I don't think it's by any means worth replacing. And another option, if you had a really bad pit in it, I would consider even cleaning it up, putting some JB Weld on it, and then using some sandpaper like this to smooth out the JB Weld. It feels a lot better to the touch now. I bought the seal kit off of eBay. I went ahead and got the OEM parts because I want to make sure everything fit exactly properly. You can see the part number for this one. You'll need some type of dental pick or hook, you know, to get underneath that O-ring that's down inside this uh, collar sleeve. And also when you pull the, the scraper out, it actually may come apart. So at first you might think you got it out, but there's actually this second part of it, which is like a metal rim. You know, and basically here's what it looks like, you know, right there on that flange, you know, once you get the piece out. The instructions call to use this seal protector, part number... 326005 and here's basically what it looks like. The manual calls for a special tool. It's like a sleeve that you fit over this edge right here. So once you put your seal into this uh, cylinder cap, then it'll slide down over here without damaging you know this uh, scraper seal. And so what I've decided to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I went ahead and put this on first because when I got up to the edge I was able to kind of rotate it and roll it around to get it over the top of this, which I wouldn't be able to do once I get it in the cap. And I'm going to see if I can press this uh, seal you know, into this cap while it's on the shaft. I'm actually able to use the channel locks and going around the circle, just lightly squeezing it, I was able to press it down right into the top of the cap. Next I'm going to use my dental pick to go ahead and remove the O-ring that's on the outside of this plunger cap unit. And we'll reinstall the new one. Next I'll use my dental pick again to remove the o-ring that's on the outside of the plunger, being very careful to make sure that these spring things uh, don't fall out of here. And we'll reinstall our new one. Now I'm ready to reinstall my plunger on the end of the shaft rod. And I've got my brand new o-ring that'll go right over the top of the threads okay. here. Now it's time to reinstall the nut on the end of the plunger. According to the shop manual, I need to go torque this to 58 to 87 foot-pounds. I'm ready to put this plunger back into the trim cylinder, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. According to the shop manual, when I go to put this plunger back into the trim cylinder, I need to fill it with lubricant. And they show here, basically filling the reservoir so that you get all the air out as best you can. As I tried to push the cylinder down into the casing, there's certainly a little bit of pressure, you know, it did have some air behind it. We'll go ahead and fill up as much as we can in the outside reservoir here, you know, before we screw this cap down. As I go to screw this down into the trim cylinder, I need to torque it to uh, 58 to 87 foot-pounds. I have my torque wrench set on this spanner wrench tool to 57 pounds, and we just torque it to specification. Here's the reservoir and the cap to fill your unit after you've made your repair. Run it up and down several times to get all the air out. When you hear these skipping noise, that's where the air is hitting it. 
Okay, that's a little bit of air that's running through the system right now. And you have to keep refilling this chamber down here also because it seems like it, it will be full, but then after you run up and down a couple times, it'll still need more. So you just keep working through it until you get all the air bubbles out. If you can get this center one rebuilt without having to pull this whole unit out of the motor, these other two are just a piece of cake. Here come some snapshots of the 1995 service manual for the Evan Rube 115. You can pause the video at any point in time to take a look at them. Hey, I hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you are the son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.